Hello, thanks for joining me. My name is Stefan and I'm a primary school teacher from the UK. One of my passions as a primary school teacher is teaching Shakespeare and I've co-written a book about this. It's due out later this year from the excellent David Fulton Publishers. The book is called Teaching Shakespeare in Primary School, All the World's a Stage and is available to pre-order now. On the 23rd of April, people celebrate the date of Shakespeare's birth, probably, and the date of his death, not in the same year. Uh, and you might be doing some Shakespeare-related activities in school to mark the occasion. If you are and you're not quite sure where to start, this video might be helpful. See, first of all, you might be thinking, why would you teach Shakespeare to primary school children? I mean, isn't it too hard? Aren't there more uh, accessible, more representative authors that we might teach with, to children rather than just another dead white man? These are really good questions, and if you are a Shakespeare sceptic, you're right to be one. And we shouldn't assume that Shakespeare's plays are good because they are old, or because clever people tell us they are. But there are some really good reasons to celebrate Shakespeare and to teach it in school, and here I'm going to talk about three of the most important. The first one is that Shakespeare's plays are rich, they're dynamic, and they're really good fun to perform and to watch. I mean, these plays haven't endured for 400 years by accident. Shakespeare writes about love, jealousy, magic, friendship and adventure, the big stuff. And these are all things that children will recognise from the stories they read, the games that they play and of course the lives that they live. The second reason is that Shakespeare is out there. No, I mean he's out there. References to Shakespeare's plays, they crop up in TV programmes and movies and of course other stories. And we might think of Shakespeare's plays as part of the long lineage of stories right from the earliest times up until the present day. Shakespeare was notorious for pillaging uh, older stories and older books for his uh, ideas for his plays. For example, Romeo and Juliet was based on an old Italian novella. It came out many decades before Shakespeare got to it uh, and wrote his version of the story. And in turn, modern authors have turned to Shakespeare's plays as sources of inspiration. So Romeo and Juliet again can be found, traces of that can be found in Mallory Blackman's Noughts and Crosses, of course the musical West Side Story, and if you look carefully you can even find it in Star Wars. So that's just one example but it's hard to get away from the fact that Shakespeare is part of the fabric of our culture and it's something that children will need to know about. But perhaps the most important reason is that Shakespeare has something to say to us in 2021 about what it means to be human. I mean, his plays, they're all about characters. The rest, it's just window dressing. When you strip away the unusual language and the historical settings, what you're left with are stories about people and people who remind us of, well, us and the people we know. Um, it's Shakespeare's characters and what we read into them that actually makes him relatable. And if you still think that Shakespeare is highbrow culture, it's worth remembering that he wrote characters that ordinary people could relate to. After all, they were the ones buying tickets to see the plays. So with that in mind, I'm going to quickly describe a tried and tested idea for helping children and teachers see how Shakespeare's plays are relevant to them in the present day. Now this activity works with any of Shakespeare's plays with learners of any age, but let's take Romeo and Juliet as an example. Now first of all you'll need to give the children an overview of the story, so you might use a short script to act the play out, or uh, use a graphic novel version or an animation to make it a visual experience. Now with the children, make a list of the key characters who influence the story, so Romeo, Juliet, Tybalt, Benvolio, Mercutio, they're the main ones. And write down who those characters are to each other. So Romeo is a young man from the, Cap uh, the Montague family, uh, Tybalt is a hot-headed Capulet. Now note down where and when the story takes place. So we have a city in the summer, a street, a party at a big house. Then ask the children to come up with a five-finger story summary uh, five things that happen in the story that the children think are important. So it might go something like this. Number one, the Montagues and Capulets are rivals and they're fighting in the street. Number two, Romeo meets Juliet at a party and they fall in love. Three, Romeo fights with Tybalt over Juliet, Mercutio dies in the fight and Romeo flees. 
before, Romeo and Juliet kill themselves over a mix-up with a dagger and some poison. And five, the families are reunited after the tragedy. Now, of course, your list of five things might be different. But now you've got the overview of the story. And now you can ask the children how Romeo and Juliet would make sense if it was set in their school in 2021. So first of all, what would the characters be called? Would it be Robin and Jasmine or Raheem and Jamila? How would the settings change? Maybe the streets of Verona or the school corridors or the dinner hall. Maybe the parties, the end of year six disco. And finally, how would the plot play out differently if the play was set in the present? Yes, you see, most schools these days, they tend to frown on sword fighting and poisonings, but playground fights, slanging matches over football, notes passed under desks about who fancies who, these are all things children will know about. And drawing these parallels between Shakespeare's play and the children's lives can help provide the flashpoints, the climaxes, the dilemmas for reimagining the story in the present day. I've done this activity with children before and it was incredible how many uh, ways the children were able to connect Shakespeare's play with their lives and experiences. And as a teacher, I didn't impose the right answers on them, but instead I let them see the connections. And now what you're left with is a bare bones version of a modern day uh, story of Romeo and Juliet. And it's then the perfect starting point for drama, for script writing, creating an animation or something else entirely. If you like this video, please share it. And if you'd like to comment, please keep it kind and constructive. You'll find more ideas like this in our new book, Teaching Shakespeare in Primary School, which is due out later this year. And if you would like updates on that, and when the book is due out, you can follow us on Twitter. Thanks for listening.